Hello, welcome to Biograde TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. How Mauritius Got Independence The colonization of Mauritius is quite an interesting turn of events given that when the Europeans first arrived on this island, there was absolutely nobody to colonize. But somehow, they found a way to ensure that colonization still happened there. How did they achieve this in a previously unpopulated land? Let's watch this video. Let's get started. Europeans began arriving at the island of Mauritius in the 15th century. Among them were the Dutch, French, the Portuguese and the British. The Dutch were the first Europeans who are believed to have set foot on the island in 1638. They decided to name the island Mauritius in honor of the Prince Maurice of Nassau of Netherlands. The island was not permanently inhabited for the first 40 years until in 1638 when Cornelius Guia established the first permanent Dutch settlement in Mauritius and thus became the first governor of the island. In 1644, the Dutch settlers on the island were faced with many months of hardships resulting from a number of factors which included delayed shipment of supplies, bad harvest and cyclones. During this month, they had to rely on their own ability to feed themselves by fishing and hunting. In 1652, more hardships befell the settlers. The population then was roughly a hundred people including slaves. The persistent hardships greatly affected the commercial potential of the island. Finally, the island was completely abandoned in 1710 when the Dutch became completely overwhelmed by the difficulties. The French then proceeded to take over the island in 1715 and changed the name to Isle de France, that is, Isle of France. France was more successful at managing the island. In fact, they did so well that it became one of the biggest economic powerhouses in the Indian Ocean region during that time. But by 1815, during the Napoleonic Wars, the island fell into the hands of the British. However, laws, languages and other French institutions in the islands were maintained. The name of the island reverted to Mauritius under British rule. The British administration, which started with Robert Townsend Fakuha as governor, experienced rapid social and economic changes. One of the major events that happened under the British was the abolition of slavery on the 1st of February, 1835. Slaves brought in from other parts of Africa to work in plantations during the French rule were set free. The planters who they worked for were compensated with £2 million sterling for the loss of their slaves. When slavery was abolished, the planters had to find a way to get cheap labor to continue work on their plantations. They resorted to using indentured labor, that is, persons bound by a contract to work over a period of time. These indentured laborers were brought in from China, Malay, and some parts of Africa but the most of them came from India. With time, Mauritius became a melting pot of different races as these laborers from different countries began raising families there and growing in number. In the 1920s, conflict arose between the Indian community which largely comprised of sugarcane laborers and the Franco-Mauritians who were descendants of the French that had settled there. The Franco-Mauritians were the elites of the island. Several lives were lost during the conflict, most of them Indians. Following these, Maurice Kiel founded the Mauritius Labour Party MLP in 1936 to safeguard the interest of the laborers. By the 1940s, Mauritius had begun taking steps towards self-rule. A legislative assembly was created and elections were held in 1947. The Mauritius Labour Party, then headed by Guy Rosamond, won the elections, ousting the elite Franco-Mauritians from power for the very first time. As agitations for independence grew, 
the British gave the nods for additional self-government and eventual independence. A coalition party was formed compromising of the Mauritius Labour Party, the Muslim Committee of Action CAM, and the Independent Forward Bloc IFB, a traditionalist Hindu party. This coalition won the majority vote in the 1967 Legislative Assembly election. Sir Siwusago Rangulam, a medical practitioner and a very popular leader of the MLP, became the first Prime Minister after independence on the 12th of March 1968. Even though the British rule ended on the 12th of March 1968, the British monarch Elizabeth II remained nominal head of state as Queen of Mauritius. Her constitutional roles were delegated to Sir John Shaw Rennie, who was the last Governor-General of Mauritius. He continued as the first Governor-General of an independent Mauritius until 27 August 1968. It wasn't until 24 years after independence on the 12th of March 1992 that Mauritius was proclaimed a republic and the monarchy was abolished. What have we missed out of this history? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.